ladies to know my dad. He was a storyteller who could light up a room. He was a systems thinker that taught us not to look at where the puck was, but to take in all the variables of the system and understand where the puck was going to be and where it was going. I was once invited to speak to all the software designers at Amazon. And the only things I really know, knew to talk about were the things my dad taught me about how to look at the variables and understand where things were going and how to, how, how to tell a good story and uh, how to make an impact. So I got three stories for you about dad. Um, some of them who, some of you who've known him for a long time will recognize some of these. One's about a billboard, one's about a football, and one's about my uncle Tom who's buried over there about 150 yards. The billboard, if you're watching the slideshow, you may have seen this billboard. I come home from school one day, 1977, April, one month before Star Wars comes out. And there's a billboard in the driveway of our home in Norwood, on Norwood in Highland, California. And I'm like, what's this billboard? My dad has, has painted this billboard. And then the next night, he and his friends go and they erect it on Alabama Boulevard between Highland and Redlands, which at the time was the most highly trafficked road between those two towns. And uh, my dad was an outdoorsman and kind of a, an activist, you might say. <laughs> and then, this is what the billboard said. This land belongs to you. Use it, but don't abuse it. Have a good time and enjoy yourself. No hunting, no trespassing, no fishing, no hiking, no swimming, no camping, no motorcycle riding, no sandbagging, no picture taking, no stopping, no parking, no fires, no looking, no nothing. Don't even think about doing anything. Signed, courtesy of the BLM, which stands for, at that time, BLM, what we knew, was the Bureau of Land Management of California and the Sierra Club. And what had happened was the, that wash where he put up the sign was the swimming hole where people who couldn't afford to have swimming pools, that's where we went for recreation to cool off when it got over 95, 100, 110 degrees. And there was a debate going back and forth uh, to cut that off for environmental reasons. And my dad was very adamant that this should be open to the public and public land. And it, it tickled his fancy, and I still read the article. I got a copy of this, this, the Sun uh, newspaper here in San Diego, went out and took a picture of the sign and put an article in the paper. And they said, <laughs> Yeah, they quoted, they called the Bureau of Land Management and said, and the Sierra Club, both the Bureau of Land Management and the Sierra Club disclaim any knowledge of the science origin. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my dad in a nutshell. And, you know, I, I think about that story, and here is a man who in 1977 was a social media insta influencer, right? He, he was Instagram before Instagram was Instagram. Uh, he went and erected a billboard and caused a conversation to uh, talk about what, what do you do with property like this and what is the best use of it. One of my favorite authors has said that America is a long conversation about what human beings owe one another. When I read that quote or I hear it, I think of my dad. He was definitely a conversationalist. <laughs> uh, I think of him a lot of times. Uh, it was hard sometimes. He was a trapper and a hunter, and that meant he spent most of the fall out in the desert by himself. And uh, that was hard growing up. And then he was also, he had, he had lots of opinions, and he wasn't afraid to share them, those of you who knew him. Um, I never really kind of understood the value of him and the way he was made and how beautiful he was. Uh, he's, he's almost like, I think of him as almost an Old Testament prophet sometimes, just a personality that lives out there by himself sometimes, eating grasshoppers and honey. He's got grasshoppers and honey kind of in his beard. And he wanders into town every once in a while. And he's like, you know, I don't think that's right. What do you all think about that? And that is the billboard story. Football question. 
So I signed up for football because I, I wanted to be good at sports because I was not the sports guy. <laughs> I was the academic guy. And, uh, and I played and I worked hard, but I wasn't very good. But the coach said that if I, if I worked my tail off, uh, he'd play me at the next game. And so I worked my tail off. Uh, well, he played me at a game up in Victorville. Um, and so I worked for a month, did my best. He said I was doing good. And so we drove up to the game in Victorville and we sat there and I didn't get played the whole game. <laughs> now, uh, I, I didn't really feel after that that football was for me. And so my dad was very frustrated about, I want to go talk to the coach. I begged my dad not like, don't go talk to the coach, dad. We'll take care of it. It'll be all right. <laughs> that was a long conversation. If you, I, I, I imagine if I walked it up to him in his care facility over the last five years, and I mentioned that incident, he would know exactly what I was talking about. And he would have an opinion and he would become very lucid um, <laughs> in that moment. And I remember we had to call the coach and let the coach know that I wasn't going to be playing anymore and that I needed to go turn my uniform in. And my dad was on the telephone, the old rotary phone, and he's, he's there in the kitchen. And he's, it's starting to get a little hot, the conversation. And, and my dad yells into the phone, do you want me to put Ryan on the phone? He'll ask you questions you can't answer. <laughs> I was 12. And it always, start, it always stuck with me. And it wasn't until a few years ago I started reflecting on it. And that was the time my dad, I realized, I, I realized my dad was really listening to the questions I asked. And he cared what I thought. And that was the first time it really dawned on me until much later in life that he, he really did care what I thought. Um, so that's the football story. Last story. I think it was around this time in 1990 or 91, my grandma passed away and we had the funeral, I think in this chapel. And um, we were hanging out with some of my dad's friends and my uncle Thomas uh, had passed away some years earlier from alcohol, uh, problem with alcohol. And um, in our family, Tom was kind of seen as the black sheep. And that was sort of, whenever Tom's name came up, we sort of talked about Tom as the black sheep. And Tom's name come up at the funeral and, and I participated in that conversation and I said some black sheep things. And my dad, he took me aside and he took me to task and he was right to do it. And he told me a story I'd never heard. And he said that when my uncle Tom, uh, he went through his divorce, he had a problem with work, or he went through divorce and he had to change the beneficiary on his life insurance, that he changed it to my brother. And I had never heard that story before. And he just cautioned me to be very careful and to understand that everybody's got a backstory. I heard a recent author say, there's, there's two types of questions we sometimes ask one another when we see something. What's wrong with you? What happened to you? What's wrong with you? What happened to you? Those are two very different kinds of questions. Uh, I love my dad. Uh, I'll read you kind of what I wrote. So a lot of my friends knew he was ailing, and I was sharing with them, and I said, my dad passed away late last night after about a year and a half on hospice watch, which I didn't know was the thing until he did it. <laughs> something that anyone who knew my dad would say, sounds like something Richard would do. Get off hospice watch. <laughs> he taught me his laughter, his rigorous thinking, and his tenacity. We were the whole package, loving, hurting, and forgiving one another many times over. And I'll end with this. There's this word, shalom, you may have heard of it. And in casual conversation, it means peace, but in some of the old poetry our pastor has been referring to, it's a capital S, and it means deep peace. It means peace that 
surpasses understanding. It means a peace that wipes away every single tear and makes every path straight and mends every broken bone and every heartache. Shalom of Kepler, Pop. Peace on. Peace on.